Welcome to the Mentally Stronger podcast, the podcast where with every episode, we're learning practical ways to let go of stress and struggles, grow our mental strength, and live a happier, healthier, more meaningful life. I'm your host, Millie O'Brien, co-founder of mindfulness.com and creator of the Deep Resilience Method. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Let's dive in to today's episode. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to the podcast. It's lovely to be here with you today. And today I'm talking about a a topic that is tender for me and very real. Today I'm going to talk about closure. I'm going to talk about the truth about closure because I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about it. So sometimes we have certain issues from the past that we feel like we haven't quite moved on from. You know, something feels a little bit unresolved and we, it almost feels like we can't really move forward with our lives. Perhaps we dwell on the past and we wish we could go back in time and, you know, change the things we said or did, or we feel that until we have a particular conversation with someone that we, we're just not going to be able to move on with life. We might think that if we could just get something from another person, an apology, an explanation, a chance to be heard and understood, forgiveness, accountability for what they did, some kind of action to make amends, a second chance, then we could get closure and move on. Now, the problem with all of these things is they're all things that we cannot control. But the good news is that that's okay because closure actually doesn't involve anyone else but you. Now, a couple of years ago, I had a falling out with a friend, a big one, and it was the first time that anything like this had ever happened in my life and it came as a huge shock and I had enormous grief over it. And I didn't feel like I had closure for a really, really long time. And if I'm honest, it was consuming me. I needed her to not hate me. I needed her to understand. I needed to say sorry. I needed her to say sorry. I needed her to be accountable for her actions. But when none of this was possible, I really felt like I couldn't move on. And it was really affecting the quality of my life. But after a while, I realized how detrimental, how stressful and how debilitating it was to hold on to it all. And I realized that I had to find my own peace with things. So I began a process of finding my own closure within myself. And what I realized is that closure really is an inner process It doesn't actually require anything at all from the other person. Although, if it is actually possible, then sometimes we're going to find it really helpful to do that too, right? So that that I want to say that very clearly. A lot of the time, if it is possible, then it's wonderful. But I think the most important thing to realize is that actually you're not really closing something. You're healing something. Although the word closure feels really convenient, (laughs) you know, very neat and tidy and final, doesn't it? Like closing a door, very black and white. The reality is, is that you're wanting to heal something and healing is not so black and white. There's a lot of gray feelings and healing is often messy and non-linear And there's times when things feel fine on one day and then on the next day, uh, the pain resurfaces and you get triggered and that's how healing goes for humans. Healing is a little bit messy and uncomfortable and it always takes longer than we want. But here's three ways that we can encourage healthy healing in these kinds of situations. Number one, be patient and gentle and compassionate with yourself in the process. If we can do that, instead of trying to push the door of healing closed, 
then we can bring a certain amount of soothing and comfort and love to ourselves and acceptance to ourselves in the middle of it all. And we're actually much more likely to heal faster if we do this. Second thing is to support yourself. Now, some things that you could do to support yourself uh, in these kinds of complex situations when you're healing along the way is to do things like maybe setting healthy boundaries with other people who are involved. This actually might involve doing something like cutting off communication with someone if it's becoming unhealthy uh, to help you let go of an attachment or to give you space to heal from an unhelpful relationship. It might mean not following people on social media or asking for what you need to help you move forward. So support yourself and look after yourself in your healing process. The third thing you can do is to use healing modalities, right? Healing modalities include things like talking to a therapist or any number of different kinds of things that you can do to support yourself in the healing process, nourish yourself and take really good care of yourself while you're going through your healing. And the fourth thing, embrace life. Even as you're healing, even if it's you know, you're not there yet and you're still carrying some pain, some discomfort, embrace life. Perhaps try new hobbies, make new friends and do things you really love. Even as your healing continues, you can still enjoy life and, you know, dance and play and laugh and lay in the sun and, you know, nourish your soul. So all of this is really helpful. These are helpful things that you can do. But the main thing really is to be patient with yourself and allow healing to happen step by step, day by day. And just know that you can still choose to live fully in the present, even if you carry a bit of pain from the past. So this week's invitation for mental strength practice for us all is to practice this kind of healthy closure. So if you still have stuff, like I have stuff, that feels a bit unresolved, just reminding yourself about the the truth about closure. It's really about healing and just making peace with the healing process and practice healthy healing, which is to summarize, one, be patient with yourself, be gentle and compassionate. Healing takes time. Two, support yourself. Three, use healing modalities. And four, embrace life. Hey, I hope this helps you become mentally stronger this week and and on going into the future. Thank you for your practice and your presence here in this community. I wish you a great week ahead and I'll see you on the next episode of Mentally Stronger. Until then, take care. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your mental strength and you can keep practicing along with us every week. If you are wanting more support in becoming mentally stronger, come over to my website and take a look at all the coaching and training options that I have there for you. And I also have a bunch of free resources, including a five-day mental strength challenge that you can begin right away to kickstart your mental strength, improve your mental well-being, as well as your happiness and resilience. You can find all the links for this in the show notes. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care and stay strong.